Our next speaker is uh, Lila June. She's an indigenous musician, scholar, and community organizer of Dinai and Tetsis uh, in European line lineages. Her dynamic multi-genre presentation style has engaged audiences across the globe toward personal, collective, and ecological healing. Lila June blends studies in human ecology at Stanford, graduate work in indigenous pedagogy, and the traditional worldview she grew up with to inform her music, perspectives, and solutions. She is currently pursuing a doctoral degree with a focus on indigenous food systems revitalization. Please help me welcome Lila June. Uh, greetings, my relatives and my people. So I'm from the Nanisht Ejit Khachitni clan of the Dene nation. I said, you don't have to succeed, but you do have to try. <laughs> Dene. Push both there. Yes. <laughs> Dene nation. We are also incorrectly known as Navajo. Um, and I get that clan from my mother. We are a matrilineal people. So we receive our last names from our mothers, not from our fathers. We are indigenous to what is now called New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona. But we call it Denebakea, the people's land. And we share it with many beautiful Pueblo nations and our Apache relatives, De relatives. Um, and also, I just wanted to update I did finish the PhD. Um, it was a bit of a. <laughs> um, we must have sent the, the old bio over via email. But um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a good journey. Um, and I just want to say uh, how much I love you all and how happy I am to be here and how happy I am to the Creator for giving us life this morning. Um, I love this topic of loving the stranger because a lot of my life has been dedicated to trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> As an indigenous woman, you can imagine what it's like to wake up every day in this country, in this place that destroyed 98% of my people. And because we were strange to them and because we were standing on land they wanted, so not only why didn't they love us as strangers, but how can I love them as strangers? How can you love someone after abuse has occurred? And some people call that grace. Some people call that forgiveness. And I've really enjoyed diving into that in my life. Um, but loving the stranger, uh, let's make no mistake, it takes courage. It takes bravery. It takes the ability to lean into discomfort. And it takes compassion. And so I'm gonna invite us all to try to do that today. Albert Einstein said, our job is to extend our circle of compassion wider and wider and wider to envelop the whole universe. So how can we do that? How can I, as a Native woman growing up, uh, I grew up in Taos, New Mexico, where people were actually very supportive of my culture. So I also know what it means for the other to celebrate me, to celebrate who I was. And whether they were Native or non-Native, they respected Diné people, and they respected our language, and they still do. So I've tasted the fruits of what happens when we do love the stranger, and it is beautiful. But I speak to you at a time where my heart is broken, deeply broken, for what is occurring in the world today. And I think part of our job today is to, to expand our compassion to everyone, even those the media tells us to hate, even the ones the media tells us it's okay to, to murder, 
even the ones who we are taught is unimportant uh, because they murdered us. And so I think it's so important to draw these parallels. So I'd like to tell you a quick story. Back in the day, you know, indigenous peoples here in what I call Turtle Island, I try not to call it America because America comes from Amerigo Vespucci. Um, Amerigo Vespucci was documented to be commissioned to find people to enslave and gold to extract. So we don't really like to name this land after him because this land does not stand for enslavement and extraction. It's <laughs> This land stands for liberation and abundance and giving and being a warrior for your people, being a warrior for others. So Turtle Island is our word for this, for this land. Um, but, you know, hundreds of years ago, this place was, was quite, quite bad for Native people, and it still is today. Um, but we were being um, sieged and we were being exterminated. Um, uh, and in California, it was even funded to exterminate us. You could get $5 for every scalp you brought to Sacramento of a Native American. And so during this time, <laughs> ironically, we were called the savages. We were called the terrorists. And it was so painful for our ancestors. And also, there was so much uh, of us trying to be um, harmed, and yet we were expected to be perfectly peaceful when they were slaughtering us by the millions. And you know what? Sometimes we succeeded in that. And it was beautiful when we did, and sometimes we did not. But I say this today because I feel a similar story unfolding in Gaza, in, in um, what we call the Gaza Strip. And right now, uh, a terrible, terrible attack happened, right? October 7th by Hamas. Uh, they estimate about 1,200 people were killed brutally. And that's terrible. And today, as I stand here, 12,000 people have died that we know of in Gaza and almost half of them are children. And what's crazy and why I must say something today and why I must invite us to lean into this, this, this challenge to love the stranger is that our tax dollars are funding the Israeli army. Last year we gave 400 million a day to Israel. And at this time, they are raining bombs over half of the residential structures, or sorry, 200,000 residential structures have been obliterated. And so I, I cannot remain silent today on this. We are funding the active uh, cleansing of a people as we speak, our tax dollars. And so if I ask myself, if I was born in the year 1800, and the US was sieging these people because they felt this manifest destiny. They felt that they were divinely ordained to take the land from sea to sh shining sea. What would I say in the 1800s? What would I want others to say? Even if it was unpopular, even if it was scary to love these strange Native Americans who dress different, talk different, what would I have wanted people to say? I would have wanted them to say, hey, stop it. Stop killing these people. They're not animals. They're beautiful. And so similarly, I must say this today, because we're in 2023 now, and something very similar is unfolding in our lifetimes, where they are actively trying to destroy a people. I do not care if the president of Hamas is under a hospital. That still would not give us the right to bomb a hospital 
and hospitals are being bombed right now in Gaza, killing hundreds of people at a time. And we have seen all the bloodied children, thousands of them. And don't get me wrong, there's children dying all over the world right now, in many different places. But this one is unique to us as Americans because we are funding this. We are funding these things. And so I humbly, as humbly as I possibly can, I urge us all to act now because we've been trained not only to not love the stranger, but to actively not care for the stranger at all. And so at this time in our media, everything is slanted. Everything is slanted. And so it's very hard for us to love the stranger today, especially in Gaza, because all of this information is muffled. And so how are we going to love the stranger when so many things are working to divide us apart? And so as part of our strength and our courage to expand our field of compassion to every child, and this goes for pro-Palestinians as well, we must expand our compassion to every single Israeli person, every single beautiful Jewish person who has suffered immense trauma over the centuries and who are creators, people who are here to help bring people closer to the creator. And although some of them lost their way, many of them did not. We must also, as pro-Palestinians, expand our realm of compassion, even to the ones who harm us, even to the ones we don't understand. And only then will that bridge be made. And so it's a hard job to love the stranger. I think we could easily take the route of making this a nice, pretty, flowery panel. But the truth is it's hard. And I know I'm out of time, so I'm just gonna end with one final story. <laughs> we have this figure in history called Jesus. And Jesus was an expert at loving the stranger. Jesus was radical. Jesus was a very different person than most of us often think of. When Jesus was, um, he, he didn't take sides. He sat and had dinner with the tax takers. He sat and had dinner with prostitutes who were more like slaves. Um, he had dinner with the, or rather he sat at, with the woman at the well who was not the right culture to be loved or cared for. And he always cared for the lepers. And no matter, or, or people with leprosy, I should say. And he was an expert at being brave, right? When everyone was stoning this woman because she had sinned, he easily could have remained quiet and said nothing, lest he be stoned as well. But no, he stood up and he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And he was an expert at being so brave to those who stepped to him and said, what? These people aren't paying taxes. Isn't that terrible? And he said, well, what's on the coins? And it says, Caesar. Well, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. And so there's many of these figures throughout time, right, that we admire. And those people are the people who loved in the face of extreme fear, who loved their enemy, who loved the people that the world trained them to hate. And I'm begging you, please, let's put that down because lives are in the balance as we speak. And we must break free from the silos we've been put in, the information silos, and we must betray <laughs> We must betray our peers who pressure us to only love one group because that is not what the creator would want for us. So I'm going to finish now, but I'm just gonna end by saying that I could not remain silent today when children are being ripped apart by our own tax dollars. And I would beg you, please, please consider, if you're not already in the know, 
please consider standing up for the children who are dying as we speak, funded by our tax dollars. Thank you.